in the precious blood of Jesus. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. Oh, I want to praise His name. Each day is just the same.
shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. He is coming in power. We will hail the blessed hour. We shall see the king when he comes. Oh, my brother, are you ready for the call? To crown your Savior King and Lord of all. The kingdoms of this world shall soon be before him fall. We shall see the king. We shall see the king, we shall see the king, we shall see the king when he comes. He is coming in power, we'll have the blessed hour. We shall see the king when he
studying the book of James chapter by chapter. And uh, sometimes the chapters are a little bit long, and so we break the chapters up. And uh, we're in James chapter 5, and I will be reading verse 7 through 12. The Bible says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman watcheth, or waiteth, for the precious fruit of the earth, and has long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of mercy, and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea. And your nay, nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Tonight is our eighth study on the book of James. And tonight in this message, I want to preach to you on the subject. And I'm calling the title of this message, Enduring Patience. Would you lift your hands one more time toward heaven? And let's pray for God's anointing upon this message. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for your presence, Father, that we have felt so real in this place this morning and tonight. God, as we study your word, Father, I pray that you would open up our minds and our ears to hear the truth of your word spoken to us. God, that our lives may be changed. Lord, that strongholds would be broken. God, that whatever circumstance we face in life, God, that it may be turned around for your glory and your honor. And Lord, we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. As we wait for the Lord's return, we must be patient. We must be patient and not, and not get in a hurry because we do not know the day nor the hour in which Jesus Christ is coming again. The Apostle James compares our patience of waiting on the Lord to that of a farmer. You see, a farmer works hard to cultivate and to nourish their crops until the day of harvest. It all begins when they b began to break the ground and they began to plant a seed. And from that point forward, the farmer is working diligently to nourish and to care for that seed that has been planted until that seed begins to blossom into a plant and it begins to produce some fruit. And that farmer never neglects that plant, but he keeps on nourishing it. He is protecting it from the parasites that would seek to destroy it. And finally, the day comes that the fruit is ripe and it's ready to be harvested and the farmer goes out and he gathers in the harvest from the field. And just as the farmers today are nourishing their crops and caring for them. We are also nourished by prayer. We are nourished by the study of the Word of God, which must be continuous in our life until Jesus comes again. Every day that we live, we must live with the assurance that Jesus Christ is taking care of us. He is our Good Shepherd, and because He is our Shepherd, He is also watching over us. He is watching over His sheep. He is shielding us from the snake of the enemy. He is our hedge of protection. He is our shelter and he is our strong tower. And Jesus is preparing you and I to be ready for the great harvest. He is preparing the day when he is going to bring his harvest home. When the Lord himself shall gather his children home in the clouds of glory. We must be patient. We must be strong. We must endure. And we must be watching and waiting for we do not know the day nor the hour in which Jesus is coming, but we do have the assurance that his coming is very soon, and we must be ready. Being involved in conflict, as James tells us, can cause us to miss out on God. Being involved in conflict can cause us to miss the rapture. You see, people of God must be people who work together in unity. 
We must be in one mind and one accord. A church cannot grow where there is division. A church cannot experience revival where one group of people wants to do one thing and the other group wants to do something else. Psalms chapter 33 verse 1 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 through 7, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Jesus Christ. We do not know the day in which Jesus Christ is coming. We do do not know when the rapture of the church is going to take place. But James assures us that we can know that Jesus Christ is already standing at the door. He's standing at the door. How do we know that Jesus is standing at the door? You know, sometimes you can know that someone is standing on the other side of the door. If there was a commotion going on in that hallway and I could hear footsteps walking near that door, I can have the assurance to know that someone is standing at that door. For many years now we have heard the sounds of the coming of the Lord. We know that he has been near the door for a very long time. Now I have a very silly illustration to present to you but it, it makes perfectly good sense in the point that I'm trying to make tonight. Some time ago my wife and I was adopted by a neighborhood cat and she showed up at our house one day and, and I guess she was hungry because we gave her something to eat and she hasn't left since then. But uh, you may think I'm crazy but uh, this cat has kind of taught me a few biblical principles and uh, where'd that come from? And as I was uh, praying one day, uh, one time well, the cat was missing. We didn't know where she went to. I thought well maybe she got ran over, maybe someone ran off with her and I kind of went to prayer one day and I said Lord help us find this little cat because uh, this cat has helped us understand some biblical principles and, and uh, the Lord heard our prayer and we started hearing the awfulest amount of meowing and found out the cat had climbed the neighbor ladder and gone up into their attic and meanwhile while she was up there prowling around the trap door was shut and she was stuck up in their attic for three days and three nights but uh, once she got out she was set free and she hasn't left our house since then but uh, this cat sleeps all night in our garage on a bed that we fixed up for and she knows every morning at 730 that that door that goes out into the garage is going to open up she knows that I've got to go through that door to get to my car in order to go to work. So how does she know that I'm coming? Every morning I walk out that door. She's already standing there at the door looking up at me, already meowing, expecting to receive something. How did she know I was coming? You see, she recognized the signs. She already heard some commotion going on in the environment. She recognized that there was some doors opening and closing inside the house. She recognized that there was a stirring that was taking place. And, and then she begins to hear footsteps walking on the wooden floor in our hallway that makes all kinds of pops and cracking sounds. And, and so she gets out of her bed. She stands at the door because she knows at any moment that door is going to open and she's going to receive a reward. But one more thing takes place before she really gets excited. I'll get to the door, I'll turn on the light that goes out into the garage, and then you would think this cat turned Pentecostal, because once that light comes on, she begins to spin around, she begins to make all kinds of noise, scratching at the door. Why? Because she knows her master is standing at the door, fixing to open the door. You see, for several years now, for many generations of time, we have known that Jesus Christ was standing at the door. How do we know that? He's given 
given us signs to look for. He's given us warnings. He's told us to watch and to be ready. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 5, the Bible says this, Know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. You see, the signs of the coming of the Lord are all around us. Everywhere that we look, we see things that are taking place. And not all the things that take place in the last days are going to be bad, but there's also some good things that's going to take place leading up to the coming of the Lord. In Acts chapter 2, verse 14 through 21, the Bible says, But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus has given us signs to look for. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus was standing with his disciples on the Mount of Olives. He was giving them signs to look for so they would recognize the time of his soon return. In Matthew 24, verse 3 through 14, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved and verse 14 he gives us one final sign that we are to look for to let us know something that's going to take place just before he comes again. He says, And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Church, we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is standing at the door. He is just about to open that door to call his children home. And just as he has promised before 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ is coming again. The angel said in, in Acts chapter 1 that this same Jesus, which was taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Very soon we're going to see Jesus Christ. He is coming back to take his people home in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 17. For the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. What are we talking about tonight? He is coming soon. 
soon and he is standing at the door. How do we know he's at the door? Because we recognize a commotion that's going on. We recognize the things in this world that's taking place. We see all of the signs appearing just as Jesus said they were going to take place and we must endure until the end if we intend to be saved. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 verse 13 but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Church, God never promised that our journey with him was going to be easy. There's going to be some times when we are tested. There are going to be days when we are struggling. But through every trial, through every test, through every struggle, through everything that we face in this world, we must never give up. We must never lose hope of the calling of God. Just remember the testimonies that we see of the people of faith who, who trust in God. The Old Testament prophet Daniel, he was true to God. He was a man of patience. He was a man of faith. And the Bible tells us that he prayed three times a day. He didn't care if he offended people in his community. He didn't care if his relationship with God offended those who were around him. Daniel was not going to back down. Even when the law of the land said that you cannot worship like this any longer, Daniel was still going to worship God. He was still going to pray. Why? Because he knew that his God was able. He knew that his God was mighty. He knew that his God was more powerful than all the pagan gods of this world. And Daniel was not going to give up. And so Daniel was going to worship God. He didn't back down in his relationship even when he knew it could cost him his life. You see, there was a new decree. It was against the law to do what Daniel was doing. The king had made a decree against what Daniel was doing in Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and he opened his windows in the chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a fourth time. What happened? Daniel was then thrown into the lion's den, but he didn't have to go in that lion's den by himself. You see, God protected him. God went with him and kept the lion's mouth shut tight. And the next morning, the king released Daniel and recognized that God had protected him. And God used Daniel's circumstance. He used Daniel's endurance to change a king and to change a nation. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 26 through 27, the king said, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble in fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even until to the end. He delivereth and rescueth. He worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? I look and I read also in the book of Daniel about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were three Jewish men who had made up their mind that they were not going to bow to the king's image of gold. You see, they knew that there was only one God. And they were only going to worship him. And the king was furious that these three Hebrew men would not bow down to his image. And so he reminded Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego about the law. He was giving them another chance. You see, the law said that every day when the trumpets and all kinds of music would begin to sound, that people across Babylon must bow down to the king's image of gold. And anyone who had refused to worship, and anyone who would worship anything else or any other god, God would be cast alive into a burning fiery furnace. And so the king was wanting to give Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego one final chance. He thought surely, surely they would bow down to this image of gold instead of risking their lives. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was not going to bow. They were not going to compromise their relationship with God. And so the king had them thrown into the fiery furnace. The Bible says that he threw three men in the fire. They were bound together. But when the king looked, he saw four men in the fire. And not only was there four men in the fire, but they were also loose. And this fourth man was the son of the living God. And so King Nebuchadnezzar, 
He then said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego free. He declared that their God is God. And in verse 29, he said, there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that the God they served was going to take care of them. They had patience. They had endurance. They knew that God had made a promise to them, and they were going to hold God to his promise. They told King Nebuchadnezzar, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver Deliver us out of thy hand, O king. And they further told the king and said, But if not, in other words, if he does not deliver us, be it known unto you that we will not serve your God, nor bow down to worship the image in which you have set up. Church, it takes that kind of faith to make it in this world. No matter what's going on around us, we must endure unto the end. We must never settle for the easy way out of the temptation. We must never settle for the easy way out of the circumstances that we are facing. But we must hold true to the promise of God. Yes, we may face a large difficulty. We may face a sickness. We may face a big test. But understand, our God is bigger. Our God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. There's a lot of people today that fall into the lie of Satan. They want to take the so-called easy way out of this life. There may be someone under the sound of my voice tonight, whether in this sanctuary or someone watching online. You have found yourself at some point facing a terrible circumstance. Maybe you're facing a financial crisis and you don't know where the income for your next bill is coming from. There may be someone that has some kind of an addiction and you feel as though it is keeping you in bondage. You may feel that you're facing an, an issue with some family members. There may be someone in your family that's talking about you and saying things about you that is not true. You might be manipulated by people that you once trusted, but now you're discouraged and now they're deceiving you. You may feel as if there's no hope for your circumstance. You may feel as if there's no hope. There's no way that it's ever going to end. Maybe someone's lost their job. Maybe the money is gone. Maybe the kids are going through a midlife crisis and you have no idea where they're at. You may be on the brink of losing everything that you've ever worked for. And you may think that you have nothing else left to live for. See, those are things that the enemy tries to place into people's minds. He says there's no reason to keep on living. There's no reason to keep on trying. He tries to tell people that there is no way that you're ever going to be free from this situation. The enemy tries to tell us, wouldn't it be much easier just to end it right here and right now and you can have rest, you can have peace and no more worries. Church, don't listen to the lie of the enemy. Just know this, that if you give in, if you give in to the lie of the enemy, he knows that's all it takes just to get you where he wants you to be. And you'll never have peace. You'll never have the, the joy of the Lord. You'll never have that, that eternal rest with Jesus Christ if you just throw it all away. That's all Satan wants to do is to get people to take their life. See, God hears us when we pray. We don't have to worry about the problem. We don't have to worry. There's a lot of people that's afraid of what possibly may be taking place on Wednesday. I don't know what's going to take place. I don't know why we have 50,000 or 25,000 soldiers being deployed to Washington, D.C. We don't know what's going to take place. But we do know who's sitting on the throne in heaven. We do know who is in charge. We do know who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. We know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Psalms chapter 40, verse 1 through 3. The Bible says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Church, we must never give up. We must never give in to the things of this world, but we must be committed to go all the way. We must have a commitment in our 
our life that we're going to walk with Jesus regardless of the cost. We're going to walk with Jesus whether we go by ourselves. If our family don't go, we're still going to go. If our friends don't go, we're still going to go. If it costs me my job, if it costs me my finances, I'm still going to make a commitment to walk with God. There needs to be something inside of your spirit that says, I will serve the Lord no matter what happens in this world, no matter who is elected as president, no matter who serves in public office, God is still in charge. He will never leave us or forsake us, but he is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And though it seems that the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says the Spirit of God will raise a standard up against it. And if God be for us, who can be against us? We shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Many of us are blessed. Many of you here tonight, you're blessed, and some people are blessed and don't even know it. There's sometimes we may find ourselves that we're waiting on a blessing from God. And the enemy comes in and he's trying to tell us that God doesn't care, that God's not going to provide, that God's not going to do this or that. But listen, if we will hold on to the promise of God, if we will stand on his word, if we will wait on the Lord, he will come to see about you. If we wait upon the Lord, we're going to mount up with wings as eagles. If we wait upon the Lord, we're going to renew our strength. If we wait upon the Lord, we're going to run and not be weary. If we wait on the Lord, we're we're going to walk and not faint. If you're tired or if you're weary, if you're ready to throw in the towel and you find yourself facing a problem in this world, you find yourself facing the discouragement of your life and the enemy tries to tell you, you might as well just give up. You might as well just curse God and die. And he says there's no use to keep on trying. The enemy says you need to just keep, a, you, you need to just give up. But I want to tell you today, church, you got to keep on going. You got to keep on believing. Leaving. You got to keep on praying. You got to keep on pressing on because we, we don't have much longer to wait. Jesus Christ is coming soon. We don't have time to play games. We don't have time to debate the things of this world. We must look up and rejoice. Our redemption draweth nigh. If you will hold up in the time of your circumstance, our God will show up. You see, he's the God that shows up in the midnight hour. He's the God that goes with you through the fiery furnace. He's the God that goes with you through the flood. Through the flood. He's the God that goes with you in the lion's den. You see, that's the kind of God that I serve. That's the kind of God that I worship. That's the kind of God that we praise and give glory to. You see, when we're up on the mountain, he's still our God. When we're down in the valley, of the shadow of death. He is still my God. When I'm up and when I'm down, he is still my God. And he will never leave me or forsake me. But he is still God. There is just something about his name. You see, he is as close as a mention of his name. You see, when I call on Jesus, all things are possible. When I call on the name of Jesus, sickness is healed. When I call on the name of Jesus, doubt turns into belief. When I call on the name of Jesus. Fear turns into courage. When I call on the name of Jesus, there is power. There is authority. There is help in my life. For he is the source of my strength. He is the strength of my life. When I'm going through a problem in my life, I just call on the name of Jesus. And he is there. And he will answer when I pray. We just say his name. Somebody shout the name Jesus. His name is Jesus. When I call on the name of Jesus, all things are possible. When I call on the name of Jesus, the mountain becomes a plain. When I call on the name of Jesus, I am set free. Is there anybody here tonight, here at How Assembly of God, that knows how to call on the name of Jesus? Is there anybody here that can testify of what happens when you call on the miraculous saving name of Jesus? Jesus Christ. Have you ever been healed when you called on the name of Jesus? Have you ever got the answer to your prayer when you called on the name of Jesus? Have you ever been blessed when you called on the name of Jesus? Have you ever got a breakthrough in your life when you called on the name of Jesus? You see, if you can have one word in your vocabulary, that word needs to be Jesus. Because when I call on Jesus, all things are possible. When I call on Jesus, he will come to see about you. When you call on the name of Jesus, miracles come to 
pass when you call on the name of Jesus. He does what no other power in this world can do. Why? Because God specializes in things that are thought impossible. And he will do what no other power in this world can do. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. The Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. A lot of times people get impatient. Sometimes they get overly aggressive in their impatience. And they begin to swear. And they begin to curse. And they begin to mock God. In James chapter 5 verse 12, the message translation says, And since you know that he cares, let your language show it. Don't add words like, I swear to God, in your own words. Don't show your impatience by concocting oaths to hurry up God. Just say yes or no. Just say what is true. That way your language cannot be used against you. Church, we must be patient as we endure. We must be patient as we wait upon God. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. In Romans chapter 8, verse 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed. Church, we may go down into the valley of the shadow of death, but God is not going to give us any fear. We have no reason to be afraid, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You see, Jesus is reminding us in Matthew 24, 13, he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Are there any endurers in the house tonight? Anyone? who has endured through a circumstance. You see, they that endure to the end shall be saved. You see, it's the will of God that all come to repentance, that all come to know Jesus Christ. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, we not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Understand this, everyone in this world, everyone in this room, everyone watching online, everyone under the sound of my voice, we've all made mistakes, we've all sinned, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 assures us of that. But that sin comes to the great price. A great sacrifice had to be made to pay for our sin. Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gift of God. That's John 3.16. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So what do we do? How do we find the way? The Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, if you have never repented of your sins and allowed Christ to come in and wash away your sin, you can do so today. If you're watching online and you've never trusted in Jesus Christ, you can do that this very day. We must trust in Him as Lord and Savior. Don't lean on our own understanding. Don't listen to the, the philosophy of man that will lead you astray. But listen to the Holy Spirit. And we must live our life with Jesus Christ. When we face a problem, just be patient and understand that God will be with us. He will lead us. He will guide us. And will never be the same in Jesus' name. When I had graduated high school in the year 2000, and I had just started attending college, I was at that age that most every kid gets to at the age of 18 when they think they know more than what they really do. And uh, yet all the time, my parents kept telling me, Daniel, don't get impatient. Don't get impatient. 
And those words have spoken to me over and over and still to this day. And the Lord gave me the words and I put it together. Eventually it became a song. I'm not going to sing it tonight, but I'll read to you the words. A song that I wrote called Patience. It says, life is full of heartaches with trouble and care. Go to the master and talk to him in prayer. Yield to his blessings and you will understand the way God will lead you to the blessed promised land. Some people think they have the answers to life's demanding plans, but soon they will realize they're on sinking sand. Just trust in the master and he will see you through. And remember that my Jesus will be there for you. If you don't know the way to the land of endless day, now's the time to get things right. Just step into his light. He will save you and cleanse you and set your spirit free. Then praise him forever throughout all eternity. And the Course says, don't get impatient for God has plans for you. When the road is rough and rocky, he will make a way for you. When you feel alone, he is the one who is your friend. He'll be with you every moment until the very end. I sat at the piano in the year 2000. And all of those words came to me in just a matter of a few minutes. And I sat there at the piano, began to weep. And I said, God, this message was to me. This message was to me. And I know a lot of times in humanity, we tend to get impatient. We live in a fast food society, so to speak. We have instant coffee, instant tea. None of those things are of God, I believe. But everything's instant. We have microwave ovens that we can have a whole meal prepared in a matter of seconds. But yet at the same time, we're trying to do the same thing in our relationship with God. And all the time, God is saying, if you will just wait, if you will just wait, don't get in a hurry, but wait. Church, we've got too much to gain, to lose. We've come too far to look back. Jesus is already standing at the door. We've seen everything coming to pass. Even the last thing that Jesus said in Matthew 24 that's to take place, he said, the gospel of this kingdom will be preached in all the nations as a witness, and then shall the end come. This very day, the gospel is preached around this world. We have missionaries, this church supports missionaries. We have missionaries in Africa. We have missionaries in Asia. We have missionaries in the Middle East ministering to Muslims. We have missionaries in Europe. We even have missionaries in the United States. And where we can't go with a missionary, we have the gospel being preached on Christian television. Even here at Howe Assembly of God, we have people that watch our internet program from Africa. There was a missionary that wrote to us last week from uh, Nairobi, Kenya. He was watching and he said he was blessed in Kenya because he was able to watch what was going on here at Howe Assembly of God gospel is being preached around this nation. What's the next thing to take place? He said, when the gospel is preached around this nation, then shall the end come. He's standing at the door. Very soon we're going to hear the trumpet of God sound and we're going to go home to be with the Lord. Can we stand together across this sanctuary? And all across this house of worship, let's rededicate ourselves to God and let's find a place to pray and shut ourselves in with God and say, Lord, I want to be ready to see you. I want to be ready when you call my name. I want to hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Church, let's get as close as we can possibly get before the trumpet of God sounds. Jesus Christ is coming soon. If we knew that tonight at 7.15 that the rapture of the church was going to take place, how would we respond? would we respond? Jesus could come before then. He could come before you have a chance to get to this front. If you need Christ, if you need deliverance, if you need God to work out a problem, come to the altar. If you're here and you just say, I'm hungry for the Holy 
Spirit. I'm, I just want to get as close to God as I can. I want to be ready to see Him. Hallelujah. Let's find a place and let's get in touch with God. Each time I stop and take the time to look around me, I see the signs of His appearing everywhere. Things He says. I'll see. 